Heavenly Father, we thank you for this evening, morning, nighttime. Father, you are outside of time. You are in eternity. Thank you, Father, for transformation, revelation, Father. Thank you for healing Freddie's father, Father. Thank you for bringing him back home. I thank you for Sally. I thank you for Ruby and whoever watched this later or joining later. I bless them. I thank you for the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of your knowledge of our purpose, calling, and gifts. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God, for your, your presence and your witness in our hearts with power and thy glory. I thank you for helping us to fulfill your original intent that you created us, Father, and put us on the earth. We bless you. We give you all the glory and praise. Thank you for this privilege and opportunity to come back together as this class, Father, to learn from you, Lord Jesus, you are the teacher. Come and teach us. Make it plain and simple and clear to our hearts, Father. Focus, attention. I cancel every distractions of the enemy. Confusion, I cancel them. Miscommunication, I cancel them in Jesus' name. Direct communication from heaven through the Holy Spirit into our hearts about your purpose, Father. We love you. We honor you. We give you all the glory and praise. In Jesus Christ's holy name we pray. Amen and amen. So last week we learned about the purpose of God for creating mankind. What was in the mind of God? And we learned God defines purpose when he creates something. That's the way he functioned. God always starts with purpose first. And we learned, don't go after gifts, don't go after money, <laughs> don't go after fame or name or a title, nothing. God starts with purpose first. We are created in his image and likeness, so we're supposed to follow him, his way of functioning. We should be going after purpose first. And because we didn't go after purpose first, but we went after gifts, titles, and fame, and power, and healing, and miracles, we created this mess out of life. That's why nothing works on earth the way it's supposed to function, because the very people whom God put on the earth to take care of things, they are not functioning in their purpose. <laughs> they got sidetracked, deviated, distracted, misinformed about their purpose. And as a result, chaos, disorder, dysfunction came to this planet Earth. The moment God's people are restored back to their purpose, I tell you, this Earth, everything will be functioning the way it's supposed to function. That is the goal of the kingdom school. That's why God started this kingdom school, gave us all these tools and materials to open the eyes of God's people. So when they come through this kingdom school, when they read one of these books, all of a sudden the light goes on in their heart, in their spirit. And it's like they have an encounter with reality, encounter with truth and a fresh encounter with God himself. And that is the purpose of this course, my dear brothers and sisters. So I appreciate you. Thank you for taking the time to join this class, to learn of your purpose and your calling and your gifts. I tell you, there's nothing like it. There, there is nothing better you could do than doing this. The earlier we did this or do this, it's the better for us. If we had done it when we were 16 years old, you know what I mean? <laughs> when we were 16 or when we were five years old, our parents should have put this revelation into our spirit man, like the kids' books that I have for kids, you know, five years and under. From the time of conception, we should put this purpose identity and the source into children's life 
So when they grow up, they will grow up with purpose, not chasing after trying to make a living, trying to survive somehow, trying to make some money, not sure why they are here, wandering through life, making mistakes, you know, bumping into walls here and there without knowing. That's not the way life is supposed to function. Life is supposed to function by design and purpose. But at least now, God, by his mercy and his grace, teaching us this. So I'm so excited. Whoever wants to listen, whoever wants to pay attention. So we learned that God created mankind to have dominion. When God said in Genesis 1.26, which is the purpose statement God gave to us, we should post that verse in our homes, you know, like in the refrigerator. Every time we look at it, our identity, those three questions, who am I, where did I come from, why am I here, has been answered in that single verse. So then he said, let them have dominion. God transferred the right of rulership to mankind in that one single phrase, let them. Everybody say, let them. God Almighty transferred the right to rule to mankind in that single verse, in that single phrase, when he said, let them, let mankind, let humans have the right to rule this planet. Complete transfer of power, complete transfer of jurisdiction, complete authority, delegated authority, to rule this earth has been given to mankind. So we are very complex creature. You know, we have a spirit, we have a soul, and we live in a body. So this dominion word is a very complex word. Oh, can you hear me and see me now? Oh, okay, good. Um, yes, Apostle. My mic was muted. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I think I, I, the internet here went off for a minute. Welcome, Robbie. So there are seven fold purpose of mankind. That's what we are going to explore today. Even though we all have one purpose, but that one purpose, because we are created spirit, soul, and body, we have sevenfold purpose in that one word dominion. Number one is dominion. God said, let them have dominion. As I said, God transferred the right of rulership to mankind from that day until now and tomorrow mankind, humans, will be ruling this planet Earth. God did not change his purpose, his mind. Just because Adam fell, mankind, humans, are still ruling and have dominion over the Earth. That's the number one. The second purpose, so the second fold purpose of mankind is to function as a gate of heaven. What is a gate? A gate is something that gives or denies access. So please write that down. A gate is something that gives or denies access. 
just like a gate you go to a house or a business you know in many parts of the world like in south africa india the majority of the buildings and houses have gates in the us sometimes it is very rare to see a sometimes there is gated communities are there but most of the houses and apartments have no gate they have doors but in other part of the world they have gate like i live in a gated community here in south africa it's a golf course and you have to have a special code to enter here uh, it's a friend of mine and i'm staying in a hotel actually even this hotel is inside that golf course so every time you go out and in you have to have an access code so mankind's purpose is to function as a gate means god is spirit and satan also a spirit being demons are spirit that's why they're called evil spirits holy spirit is a spirit they don't have physical bodies like you and i so since earth is a physical planet any spirit to function and operate on the earth requires a physical body this is very powerful principle that you need to understand so a body makes a spirit visible its qualities its nature will be manifested based on the body it occupies so evil spirits and the holy spirit and god is looking for physical bodies especially humans that's why we are called the temple of god god's original intent was he he breathed his spirit into us but he took the body from the earth why because our body gives us legal right to operate on the earth any spirit needs to operate on the earth they need a legal right what gives them the legal right a body physical body the moment you lose your body you become illegal on this planet you have to leave this planet then you have to wait until you receive your physical body again glorified body to come back or to receive a re-entry permit to live on the earth so god's intent was by creating us and calling us humans his hope was that we will give him access, access to function on the earth because we are the one with the physical body he wants to put his spirit in us and we will give him the legal right to operate on the earth so satan also looking for physical bodies because if he wants to do anything on the earth somebody has to provide him with a body that's why when god created adam he told him let them have dominion over the fish of the sea birds of the air over the cattle over all the earth and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth why those creatures are mentioned there because those creatures have bodies birds have body fish has a body cattle have a body every creeping things have a body why would god tell adam to rule over them or to subdue and to have dominion because they are the one with the physical bodies god knew satan would try to use one of those bodies to operate on the earth so he was warning adam if you see any unusual behaviors from any of these creatures that i have created you have to make them submit and put them back where they belong do not listen to them do not let them usurp against your authority that's why god told and mentioned those list of things five things in genesis 126 so a creature or a system or a person or an object 
that gives evil spirit a legal access to operate on the earth is called the gate of hell. So we have gate of heaven and gate of God or gate of heaven, uh, gate of hell. So whatever gives God access to operate on the earth is called the gate of heaven. Whatever gives Satan and his kingdom to operate on the earth is called the gate of hell. I hope you're understanding this. So our function is to function as a gate of heaven, giving heaven, God, access, legal access to operate on the earth. So in any area God wants to do something, whether in government, in media, in business, in education, nature, God is looking for a physical body. That's why the Bible says the eyes of the Lord run to and forth to, throughout the all earth looking for somebody so he can show himself great. If nobody gives him a physical body, God cannot do anything. God is limited, even though he's unlimited, he's on almighty. To operate on the earth, he's limited to the level humans are willing to partner with him. That's why even Jesus came, he had to have a body on the earth. Jesus did not just appear from heaven on earth and say, oh, I am the son of God. I just came to save every human like a superhero, like we see on movies. That's not how he came. He came legally as a seed of the woman so that he can receive a body legally. He cannot just take over somebody's body. We have to give him permission because we have a free will. So Jesus received a legal body coming through a woman, seed of the woman. So Mary provided Jesus a body legally for him to operate on the earth, to come and destroy the works of the devil, to crush the head of Satan forever. God did it legally. So if God wants to do something in the governments of our nations, he needs somebody to make him legal in that government. He has to give him somebody body. So we have to train people. That's what the church should be doing. We have to train people according to their calling. If they are called to be in politics or government, train them and send them to that field so they will make God legal to operate on the earth. Train people to work in the media. But all we did throughout the past centuries, we trained people only to preach, to go and start churches. And that's why the nations are out of order. We taught them how to sing songs. We should have been training them according to their calling, according to the gift God gave them. The world trains them according to the gifts of the people. The world trains them according to whatever the passion God put in them. But in the church, we don't do that. We brainwash people. We make all of them fit into the same box the religious box we thought it was God. That's not God. That's religion. The second, not the second, the third fold purpose of mankind, which I've been sharing, provide legal access to God and heaven to operate on the earth legally. And that's what we see in the Bible, like David. David gave his body as a living sacrifice for God to manifest through him as a king. Moses gave his body for God to manifest on the earth as a deliverer. Nehemiah or any person that we see. That's why in Romans chapter 12, Apostle Paul exhorted us saying, Brethren, you present your bodies as a legal no, living sacrifice, which is a reasonable service. That's what he says. What is a reasonable, very reasonable, that we give our body to God as a living sacrifice so he can function through us according to the call, according to his purpose, and manifest and do what he wants to do on the earth. 
But we have been taught that, you know, especially in the U.S., people say, my body, uh, what do they say? My body, my choice or something. That's what these people are saying there. It's not your body. Our body is a gift from God. He purchased it with his blood. It is a temple of the Holy Spirit. And, and the Bible says, if we destroy the temple of God, God will destroy it. If we don't take care of our body and use it for illegal purposes, God will destroy us. So here we see in the Bible, anything related to the earth realm is committed to mankind's jurisdiction. So we saw that in Genesis 2.19, out of the ground, God created all the creatures. Then he brought them to Adam to see what he would name them. And whatever he named them, whatever he called them, it became its name. Even after man fell, God said in Genesis 3.15 that the seed of the woman, again, without humans, God cannot even destroy the enemy. He needs the partnership of human. The seed of the woman will crush the head of the serpent. God didn't say, I'm going to send a lightning from heaven and struck the head of the serpent and destroying. No, he's going to do it legally. The seed of the woman, humans have to do that. Because we give the right to Satan and his kingdom, we are the only one who has the right to take it back. Adam and Eve gave the right to Satan to operate on the earth. And only we can cancel it and take it back from the devil. Jesus did his part. He received all authority in heaven and on earth. What is authority? The right to rule has been given to us through Jesus. And we have to implement and activate that authority to manifest. That's what the New Testament also says the same thing. Matthew 16, 19. Jesus said, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind, that word bind is not binding demons. That's what people in Africa thought. And they went and bind and bind and bind every demons they could find. And there's no lack of demons still. What happened to all the demons we bound so far, Freddy? <laughs> we have been They've been binding the land now. <laughs> yeah, we have been binding demons since 2000 years and still there is no lack of demons. Why? Because that's not what Jesus told us to do. And we bound our grandmas and mother-in-laws and oh my gosh, we thought they're the problem. They're not the problem. <laughs> The word bind is a legal term. It means whatever you permit on earth, heaven will permit on earth. Because we are the one who has the legal right to do it. And whatever we don't permit, lose means permit. Whatever we permit on the earth, heaven will permit it. Whatever we don't permit, Heaven will forbid it. That's what it means. Not binding demons. What we should do with demons? Cast them out. That's what Jesus said. In my name, they shall cast out demons. That's why we see in the New Testament, anytime Jesus or the apostles had an encounter with the demonic spirit, they always cast them out or, or told them, come out in Jesus' name. Not bind them and leave the demon inside the person. Then the situation become more worse than before. If you bind a demon, that demon is not going anywhere. It's going to stay there. And the situation is going to become worse than before. Don't do that. Cast them out. And tell them never to return, never come back again. So the fourth fold purpose of mankind is to protect the earth from satanic intrusion. Can you believe it is our responsibility to protect this planet earth from satanic intrusion? 
Why? Because Satan is a homeless, unemployed orphan. He has no right to be on the earth. He has no right to be in heaven because he rebelled and lost his position. He lost his dominion. He lost his place where he dwelt. He became a homeless, unemployed, fatherless cherub. That's what Satan is. But he's not completely destroyed or dead yet. He's alive. He has the right to operate. He also wants to establish his kingdom on the earth. And the only people who can give him the right to operate on the earth are humans. So that's why he stole our birthright from Adam, the right to rule. And he gave it to his seed, the seed of the serpent. Right now, majority of the people who are ruling on the earth are the seed of the serpent. While the righteous are clapping their hands and jumping up and down. The moment you receive back your birthright through salvation, you have been reinstated, reinstalled by God to exercise dominion once again. That is the purpose of salvation. To restore mankind to their birthright, to their legal authority that God gave to us. But that's not what we were told the purpose of salvation. We thought God came to save us, to take us to heaven. God doesn't want any humans in heaven. If he wanted us in heaven, he would have kept us there. Heaven was not created for humans. Heaven belongs to the Lord. The earth, he gave it to the children of men. So Adam did not protect the earth from satanic intrusion. He opened the door to Satan and his kingdom to come in and do whatever they want to do. Instead of functioning as a gate to heaven, Adam operated as the gate for hell. He opened wide the door and gave the legal access to Satan and his kingdom. And we are still dealing with that destruction until today. It will only change when God's people come to the revelation about who they are and the rights and privileges and the authority God gave to them. The fifth fold of purpose of mankind is simply to rule the earth. Adam was the first ruler. Adam was the first king of the earth. Who was Adam? Adam was the son of God. Luke chapter 3 verse 38 says, Adam was the son of God. So the rulership of the earth was given to whom? To the sons and daughters of God. God never intended for any wicked people to be in authority on the earth. Proverbs chapter 29 verse 2 says, When the righteous are in authority, people rejoice. When the wicked rule, people groan. So any country you go, people are groaning because of their government. They're complaining about the president or the prime minister or whoever is in rulership. Why? Because most of the time, the wicked people are doing unrighteous things. The only way that's going to change is when the righteous take the right to rule the earth. And that's what the church is supposed to be doing, training people to send them to government, to politics, preparing them, equipping them. The sixth fold purpose of mankind is to maximize and manage the resources of the earth. This earth has immense potential, capacity. It's been producing food and feeding us all these thousands and thousands of years. We have been sowing, reaping, harvesting, everything we need, the water, air, clothing, everything we use come from the earth. 
Actually, it's getting dark here now because it's sun is going down. So my face would a little darker than when we started. So I hope you bear with me. <laughs> I had to put maybe another light here so that... Um, So we have been using the resources of the earth all these years, and we haven't exhausted, whether it is metals, clothing, food, water, air, everything we need and use comes from the earth. God did not create airplanes. He gave us the raw materials and gave us the imagination to create an airplane. God did not give us a car. He created the raw materials and gave the creativity to mankind to make a car. God does not give us furniture. He gave us trees and hid the furniture inside that tree. Now we have to get the furniture out of that tree. That's the way God functions. Very seldom God gives us finished products. Anytime we ask God, he will give us raw material or he will give us a seed. We have to sow that seed, cultivate it, nurture it, grow it, and then we receive what we have asked him. That's why many people, when they ask God, they get frustrated because God didn't give them the finished product. Sometimes he opens a door or gives them an opportunity eventually to get the answer what they wanted. God hates laziness. God hates excuses. He expects us to put demand on the potential he gave to us and the potential he deposited on the earth. That's why gold and diamond, all these things are very precious metals. Why? Because they are hidden. Anything costly, Anything of value he is hidden. That's why the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden on a field. Why? Because it's a treasure. It is expensive. You don't, if gold was laying around by the side of the road, it won't be expensive. It will be cheap. Why gold is expensive? Because it's very hard to get it. So anything of value Anything of cost, God hides it. So let me just get this light here and let me see. I can put it. Okay, now you can see me. Thank God. <laughs> oh, that's better. So what is it that God has given it to you right now that you need to maximize and manage? Remember the, 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 the parable of the talents that the master gave five talents to one person, two talents, then one talent. For what? To multiply it, maximize it. What is it that God has given you right now that he's expecting you to maximize? But you're asking, sitting and asking God for more. He's not going to give you anything new, anything more, until you maximize what he already gave you. Your time, your potential, your gifts or talents, maybe land, Whatever, unless we start to maximize what he already gave us, he won't give us more. God will only give us what we are able to manage, what we, not what we are asking him for. Please write that down. God will only give you what you are able to manage not what you're asking for. So if you want more, ask him to give you the capacity to manage more. That's what Jesus said. 
If you are faithful in little, he will entrust you with more. But if you squander the little he gives you, then forget about it. So he's looking for faithfulness in little before he entrusts us with more. So God will only give us what we can manage. So I always ask God, Lord, give me the capacity to manage more. Increase my capacity. I bless Freddie with the capacity to manage more in Jesus' name. That your brain, that your mind, everything will function. I bless you in Jesus' name because I saw you in a dream, Freddie, one day, like a few months ago. I saw you in a dream. You're sitting with a pan, tucked in with a nice shirt and everything. It's not the person I saw you a few months ago. God is going to transform you. He's going to increase your capacity to manage more. You are going to be put in place of management, managing people, resources. And each of you, upon Sally, upon Ruby, upon Robbie, capacity to manage more. I release that grace upon you right now. And it is happening in the spirit. Receive it by faith. Say, I receive it. And it, it, is, it is happening. I it. Falling upon Freddy now. Freddy. I receive it by faith. Yeah, it is your moment, Freddy. It is your moment. Don't focus on what's happening in your father. Nothing like that. You're going to get a promotion. God is going to promote you. He's going to answer your cry. He's going to answer your Amen, prayer. Apostle. Amen. And receive it by faith. He has seen your tears. He has seen your tears. And you are going to change. The people that knew you five years from now, people won't recognize you. Who you are, where you came from. And they will wonder, who is this man? Who is this guy? Is this the Fred? Masumba that we saw five years ago, they will wonder. In that level, God is going to transform you inside and out. The way you dress is going to change. That's, how, that's what I saw in my dream. When I saw you, you're not the person I see now. Even your dress code has changed because God enlarged your territory, expanded your capacity putting a new spirit in you to become and operate as a kingdom citizen and let it fall upon each of you, not just for Freddie, but each one of you. You need it right now for the next season that is coming upon you. The seventh fold purpose of mankind is to glorify and worship God. How did Jesus glorify his father. Did he wake up in the morning, walk around some and glory, 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 glory? Is that what Jesus did? No. How did he glorify his father? He said, Father, I glorify, glorified your name by finishing the work you gave me to do. That's how we glorify him. In John chapter 17, Jesus says, Father, I glorified your name by finishing the work. And the other word is worship. Worship is the most misunderstood word in the Bible. The word worship appears 198 times in the Bible. How many times? 198 times. What shocked me is, it's not mentioned even once in relation to music or singing. So you can imagine what we call worship and what God calls worship is two different things. So the word worship appears 198 times in the Bible and not even once it is mentioned in relation to music or singing. 
then what is singing and music that is praise praise and thanksgiving we should praise sing with dance we should praise sing with music we should praise sing with singing but worship is totally different the first time the word worship appears is in genesis chapter 22 when god told abraham to take his son isaac to go to the mountain to offer him as a sacrifice when abraham reached that mountain on the third day he told his servants you guys stay here me and the son will go and worship god and come back that is the first time the word worship appears in the bible how did abraham and isaac worship god in the top of the mountain did they go up there with a guitar and a drum set can you guys see me Good. okay abraham did not go up there with a guitar and a drum set <laughs> he had a knife and fire and isaac so to abraham a stream obedience to god was worship to worship to him even to the extent of giving his own son so those are the sevenfold purposes of mankind please don't forget this the first time the word worship appears in the new testament is when the wise men came from the east looking for jesus and they came and asked where is the king of the jew we came to worship him again the wise men did not come with the guitar and a keyboard you know what they came with to worship jesus they came with gold frankincense and myrrh those are the three things they came from the east to worship the king so when they reached bethlehem the bible says when they saw the baby they opened their treasures they opened their treasures they brought from the east they they submitted they gave to jesus the gold the myrrh and the frankincense and fell down and worshiped him that's how they worshiped so right now we are going to study about the functions of mankind why do we have to study about the functions of mankind because many people get misunderstand between purpose and function there are two different things purpose is different from function function is built in to fulfill the purpose but function just because something is functioning doesn't mean it fulfilling its purpose most people are functioning but they are not fulfilling their purpose so difference between purpose and function purpose is the reason of existence function is the built-in process that help us to fulfill our purpose what is the purpose of a car transportation what is the purpose of an airplane to fly but if a car functions and it's not taking anybody anywhere it's not fulfilling its purpose what is the function of a car the engine the brake the seat the steering the wipers the battery the lights the heat the air conditioning they're all part of the function of a car but not the purpose the purpose is transportation so if you turn a car on every day for five hours burn the fuel but if it is not taking anybody anywhere it's not fulfilling its purpose if an airplane is parked in an airport it's not flying it's not fulfilling its purpose it's just taking up the space you can start the airplane and burn the fuel make the noise with the engine but as long as it's not flying 
It's not fulfilling its purpose. So what are the functions of mankind? Mankind have eight fundamental functions. We have so many functions. Blinking our eyes is part of our function. Clapping hands is part of our function. Eating food is part of our function. That's not the purpose. But some people, that's their purpose. They live to eat. <laughs> but that's not the purpose God created us. So there are thousands of functions we have. Sleeping is part of our function. So there's no way for me to mention every function of a man or a human. I'm just taking the eight fundamental function of mankind. Mankind was number one. Mankind was created for relationship with God and other people. We are social creatures. We are relational creatures. We cannot function without relationship on the earth. We cannot fulfill our purpose without relationship. Why would I come all the way from United States to South Africa? Because of relationship. Why would you come and join this kingdom school from different parts of the world because of relationship, connection. Why people get married? They're looking for relationship, friendship, relationship, neighbors, relationship, church, relationship, community. We're always looking for that community, a group of people where we feel connected. So our relationship with other people is a reflection of our relationship with God. If we are not happy with our relationship with God, we will not be happy with, the, with our relationship with other people. If you don't believe God accept us, if you don't believe God is happy with us, then we won't accept other people. We won't be happy with other people. Because our relationship with other people is a reflection of our relationship with God. So that's where we need to focus on. How is my relationship with God? Do I believe God is happy with me? Or is he angry at me? Or do I have a, he loves me, he loves me not relationship. Sunday morning, he's happy. Monday morning, he's mad. That's the way then we will be with other people. Sunday morning, we'll hug everybody and say, praise the Lord. Monday morning, we want to run away from them. We don't want to see anybody. So what sin caused is sin created a wrong perception of God in us and about us. The second function, fundamental function of a human is mankind was created to work or achieve. We all love to work or to achieve something. Why? That's the way God created us to fulfill that purpose. We want to achieve, accomplish something, especially for men. They want to accomplish something. When they accomplish something, they feel fulfilled. That's the way God designed Man, especially, when they accomplish something, a special hormone gets released in them. They, fed, they feel fulfilled. But when they can't work, when they can't accomplish something, they feel frustrated. God, that's why God gave man work before he gave him a family. So to God, work was more important than the family. To be honest with you, family is the last thing God gave to Adam, not the first thing. Family was brought to him to help him with the work God gave to him to fulfill that work. So before we go out and looking for a partner, we need to make sure our work is in order. Work means our assignment, not a job. We will learn the difference between a work and a job in this course later. Work means God-given assignment. 
A man needs to make sure his kingdom assignment before he goes out and look for a wife. And when a woman looking for a husband, she needs to make sure this man has work. He understands he understand kingdom assignment. It's very difficult to find such people on the earth today because everybody is trying to survive. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and to take care of it. Genesis 2.15 the third fundamental function of human is mankind was created to expand, multiply, and grow. That is the nature of humans. We want to grow, multiply, and expand. Why Coca-Cola reached the entire planet? Or Pepsi? Or companies like that? Because they want to expand. They want to multiply. They want to grow. Whatever has life will grow. Why do we need a kingdom school in every country? Because we want to grow. We want to expand. The more students get trained in the kingdom school, that's our dream, our goal, because that's the nature. We are constantly looking for new horizons. That is the nature of man. They, they conquered Mount Everest. Now they're trying to conquer Mars. The planet Mars, actually. China sending, India sending their space shuttles. America sending them. Everybody's trying to reach Mars. Why? Because that is the nature. That is the function of mankind. Then God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. He didn't say just stay in a cave and die. He said, go. Jesus also said, go to the ends of the earth. He didn't say, stay in a cave in your village. Be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subdue it. The fourth function of a mankind is to mankind was created to manifest the glory of God. Each of us are created to manifest the glory of God in a specific way. What is the glory of God? The glory of God is one of the another misunderstood concept in the Bible. Glory doesn't mean some kind of feeling or some kind of goosebumps that you feel. What is God's glory? Again, the word glory appears for the first time in Genesis chapter 45, verse 13. It talks about Joseph. Joseph himself told his brothers, go and tell my father all the glory that you have seen here, all my glory. What was the glory of Joseph? Because he was the second in command in Egypt next to Pharaoh. He had influence. He had servants. He had palaces. He became in charge of the entire country of Egypt. That was his glory. When you function in your maximized state, that's your glory. When everything God gave you has been put into maximum use, your capacity, your potential, that's your glory. So here is that verse, Genesis 45, 13. Joseph is telling, so you shall tell my father of all my glory in Egypt and all that you have seen, and you shall hurry and bring my father down here. That is the glory of Joseph. Jesus said, look at the lilies. Even Solomon in all his glory, Matthew chapter 6, Solomon in all his glory did not array like one of these lilies of the flowers that you see. What was the glory of Solomon? He was the wisest man on the earth. He was the richest man on the earth. The fifth fundamental function of human is mankind was created to subdue and conquer. 
So that's why whenever opposition comes, something stands in our way, where is a mountain or a hill, we want to level it, conquer it, and create a highway through it. Whether it is a moon, we want to go to the moon. Whether it's the depth of the ocean, we want to go to the depth of the ocean. If it is the highest peak of the mountain, we want to go and climb that highest peak. That's the way we were created by God. That's what Jesus said, nothing shall be impossible to those who believe. Nothing. All things are possible to those who believe. The key to fulfilling our purpose is in understanding the principle of subdue. Whatever you try to do, things will fight against you. Whether you move in the direction of fulfilling your assignment, learning a new skill or a gift or a musical instrument or a new language or whatever you try to do, there will be opposition. And you have to conquer that opposition. You have to keep moving forward. Sometimes you have to walk. No, sometimes you have to run. When you cannot run, you have to walk. When you cannot walk, crawl. But you have to keep moving forward. That's what I do. <laughs> when I cannot crawl, I take a nap. <laughs> Then I, in my dream, I'm keeping moving forward when I take a nap. <laughs> By God's grace, you know. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. We will learn about it more later in this course. The sixth fundamental purpose of mankind was mankind was created to function like God. Because we are created in the image and likeness of God, Adam had the same DNA of God. We are created to function like God functions. How does he function? Whenever he needs something, the first thing he speak, he does is he speak. He commands, he declares. Why? Because he's a king. You and I are kings and priests on the earth. When you decree a thing under the anointing, it has the power to manifest what you're decreeing. Because you're created in the image and likeness of God, you're supposed to function like God. So whenever God needs something, he speaks. Whenever you need something, the first thing you should do is to speak. Not to worry, not to say anything negative. Oh, that's not possible. That never going to happen. Well, if you keep saying that, it will never happen. But declare what you want. Speak what you need to manifest. So therefore, be imitators of God as dear children, just like a child try to copy their father. Bible is telling us, imitate God, mimic God. I want to show you a video of a little boy seeing somebody on a TV screen trying to copy and do what he does, this man does on the TV screen. And that's the way we're supposed to do with God. Watch this video. Look at this little boy, what he does. <laughs> He's in diapers.
<laughs> see, see the little guy trying to do what he's doing. That's what we should be doing with God, our Father God. We supposed to be copying him exactly how he functions because we are created in his image and likeness. Is that the way we are functioning now? Just check on your life, examine your life and see how far we have gone. Are we functioning in the image and likeness of God? The seventh fundamental function of a human is mankind was created to manifest and represent God on the earth. We are the legal representatives or ambassadors of Christ on the earth. Who is an ambassador? A representative that has been sent by the king or the government to represent that government or the king or the president. That's where we are on the earth. We were sent by heaven to represent him on the earth. We are his ambassadors. God wants to each of us to be a king over something or means to rule over something. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ as though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf. Be reconciled to God. The eighth fundamental function of a human is mankind was created to glorify God by accomplishing the works he created us to do. Just like I said before, like Jesus said, we glorify God by fulfilling the works he has prepared for us. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 says, we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus and to good works, which God has prepared beforehand so that we should walk in them. So we should be doing like Jesus did. He came to do the will of his father. Whatever he saw his father was doing, Jesus manifested on the earth. You and I are supposed to be accessing heaven, seeing what our father is doing, manifest that on the earth. So for you are bought at a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Our body belongs to God. Our spirit belongs to him. There's nothing that belongs to us. Jesus is our Lord, means he's our owner. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 20. Other functions, worship, loving one another, prayer, eating, fellowship, sharing, caring, studying, forgiving, drinking coffee or tea, are all part of our function, not our purpose. There's only one purpose, which is to have dominion. So next week when we come, we are going to study on the law of dominion. What is dominion is a law, just like gravity is a law that God established. So when you function in the law of dominion, everything you need comes to you or will come to you. And God wants you to function in that law of dominion. That's the way life's supposed to work. So, Father, we thank you for this word that you shared with us today. I bless you, people. Thank you for impartation. Glorious impartation happened to your people today. Thank you for your grace upon them, Father. This word that they heard will never depart from their heart. The enemy will not steal it from their hearts, but it will grow and take roots and grow and bring forth fruit and harvest for thy kingdom's sake and their generation after them. I bless them, Father, in your name, and they remain blessed for the rest of their life. We give you all the glory and praise. In Jesus Christ's holy name we pray. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. 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 Yes. Oh, you are blessed today. I am blessed by just teaching this, you know. My goodness, it is so powerful, anointed. God's word is always fresh and anointed. So I hope you received it. So any question, comments, or feedback 
regarding the lesson you just heard today. So that is your turn to talk and share. Roby, welcome. How are you doing, my friend? I am very good. Thank you so much for asking me. How are you? <laughs> excellent, excellent. I am in South Africa, so I'm in the continent of Africa, so I'm happy. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Africa is my second home. <laughs> Actually, South Africa is my favorite country on this planet Earth, believe it or not. So here I am. So any questions, any comments from what you heard today? Yes, ready, go. Yeah, um, thank you, Apostle, for, for the teachings. Actually, when you talked about glory, uh, we, we, we thought glory is falling down and manifesting demons, but uh, the glory of God, you have really <laughs> challenged me. Thank you so much. Thank you. And uh, maybe my question is, um, how do we present, how do we give God our body? Is it by abstaining from uh, sins or is it by, um, I don't know how to put it, but then um, how do we give God our body to have a legal right to be, to, to be used by God? That's uh, what I'm trying to maybe find out. By telling it to him, Father, I give my body as a living, living sacrifice. Because that's why we are called the body of Christ. Remember? Why we are called the body of Christ? Because Christ is a spirit. He's anointed. He's, he has gone to heaven. But if he wants to function on the earth, now he needs a body. That's why we are called the body of Christ. So we tell him, Father or Christ, I give my body as a living sacrifice for you to operate and to become legal on the earth. That's one way. Second is abstaining from sinful behavior that is destructive to our body. Third is taking care of our body, not eating things that is not good for our body. Keeping it healthy, doing exercise, because we need this body to do the things God called us to do on the earth. Because the moment we are body is gone, we are gone. We have no right to be here once we lose the body. So take care of it the best you can. Keep it healthy. If you put garbage in, we get the garbage out. <laughs> if you put good things in, we get good things out of the body. It will work well longer. Amen. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes, Robbie, go for it. Um, I have a question. Um, in imitating God as our father, uh, how do we imitate him? Because uh, I feel like it's very broad. So <laughs> how, how do we imitate him? Is it in loving people, in... Uh, I don't know, I just wanted maybe to get a further explanation on that. Yeah, yeah, it is very broad and very almost impossible, right? Because God has no limit. He can do one way you said is loving. God is loving, so we're supposed to be loving. But in Genesis 1, chapter 1, verse 1 to 25, God showed us how to manifest his nature and likeness. Like I said, whenever God needs something, what does he do? He speaks. Life and death are in the power of the tongues. And God wants us to function the same way because most of the time what we speak is negative. Over the nations, oh my gosh, we curse everything. We curse the nature, we curse the earth, we curse our country. Man, our country's a mess and I'm not going to do anything good. You know, we curse ourselves. We have to stop it. That's the number one way we function according to his likeness and nature is by speaking, learning to speak like he speaks.
So how did he function, manifest his nature when he saw the earth was without form and void, darkness was upon the face of the deep, God said, let there be light. He didn't look at the impossibility. He always looked at the possibility. If we have seen that earth in Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, we will say this is completely hopeless. Nothing good is going to come out of this earth. <laughs> it's full of dark, no shape. It is void, no life, no light. Why waste our time? But God looked at that earth and said, let there be light. And he wants us to function exactly like him. Whatever impossible situation that you have in your life right now, don't submit to that impossibility, but overcome that impossibility by speaking like God speaks. That's the number one way we should imitate God, our Father. Does that make sense? Okay. Thank you. Ruby. Are you going to say something, Ruby? Can you hear me? Are you there? Well, if not, please read the reading assignment. Some of you did not have the book. Those who can buy it, please buy it. If you cannot buy it, let me know. I will try to find a sponsor or somebody for scholarship for your books if you're, you know, out of the country and not able to afford it. So thank you so much for being part of the Kingdom School. Pray for the Kingdom School. You are now taking the second time, second course. Some of you are taking the third time. So please keep Kingdom School in your prayers that God will expand it. Actually, we are working on launching the Kingdom University now by fall. That's one of the reason I'm here in South Africa to talk to the people here. Um, to launch it by the fall. So we need a lot of God's grace and help. So thank you so much. And I appreciate you for your hunger, for learning, open to learn new things, you know? That's the way we grow. So may the Lord bless you and expand to you and enlarge your capacity to learn, to manage more, like you heard today. Uh, God will only give what we can manage not what we ask him for. So if he's not ask, if he's not giving something, that means we are not ready to manage yet. So ask him to enlarge the capacity to manage more. And may the Lord make that happen. This lesson will be uploaded onto YouTube within 24 hours under DPCG course, class A, lesson number two, June 29th under the channel, The Kingdom School. So please subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you haven't already done it, please subscribe to The Kingdom School channel. I would appreciate it. Okay. Thank you and God bless you. Have a wonderful, glorious week. I will see you next week then. Bye. Thank you, Apostle. Bye-bye. Thank you for the wait.